International Conference organized by Belarus Society of North America. Uh, we thank each and every one of you for uh, coming to the conference and we hope that this conference uh, will help you to understand the Balochistan situation and uh, suggest uh, solutions to the problems that the Balochistan is facing today. Um, I especially thank uh, to, to Dr. Juma Murray uh, from Moscow, uh, Tarek Sobra, Mehrab Sarje, Raza Hosseinbor from London, uh, Michael Hughes uh, from Seattle, Malik Suraj from Arizona, Ibrahim Nasser from um, DC, uh, Andrew Eva, uh, David, and uh, Sue Fraser from DC. Uh, welcome all of you uh, for taking uh, time to come to this conference. Uh, Ali Arjmandi and uh, Humayun uh, Mubarak from Oslo, Norway, and uh, Jalal Khan from Canada. Uh, thank you all of you for taking time from your busy schedule and uh, coming to join us at this conference. Uh, I especially thanks to our special guest, uh, um, Wendy Johnson and uh, Annie Nasenti for uh, taking the time to come and join us here. They are here today. Wendy Johnson is the co-producer of uh, uh, the documentary is called The Baloch uh, and she is also running a website called uh, TheCrisisBaluchstan.com. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, please take a look. Uh, thank you, uh, Annie and uh, Wendy and Annie. Thank you for being here. Uh, Dear friends, uh, I was expecting that uh, Khan of Khalat, uh, who who is the chief guest of this, who is the chief guest of this conference, supposed to be here uh, along with uh, Sardar Akhtar Jan Mengel, uh, Munir Mengel from France, and uh, Badal Khan from Italy, and uh, Sana Baloch from Switzerland, and uh, none of them. I'm sorry to say that none of them they make it because of some uh, problems with their visa, uh, with, the, with the issuing of their visa. But uh, the good thing is that uh, we have uh, uh, Khan of Kalat, uh, uh, Akhtar Jam Mengal, and uh, Munir Mengal from Paris. Uh, they are here with Skyfe, and uh, I will introduce them to you. Uh, they can share their thoughts and answer your questions if you have any. Um, so let's welcome Khan of Kalat, and uh, I hope he is uh, here. Uh, before I invite Khan of Kalat, uh, I would like to to say a few things. Uh, uh, we are having this conference uh, in a time where Baloch uh, peoples are collecting uh, the bullet-riddled bodies, uh, bullet-riddled tortured bodies of their loved one every day. I was coming for this conference the other day, and I read in the newspaper that there were more, m there were five more bullet riddle uh, bodies found uh, across the Balochistan, in different parts of the Balochistan. Uh, despite to many alerts and uh, 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 warnings from the Amnesty International and other human rights organizations, such as uh, human rights. Uh, 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 Commission's uh, Asian Human Rights Commission and uh, Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, uh, the United Nations, the Obama administration, and the world community have not done anything to stop uh, the Pakistani and Iranian killings of the Baloch people in Balochistan. Uh, their silence uh, has been read as a green signal uh, by Pakistan and Tehran to continue their killings of the Baloch with full impunity. Uh, South Asian expert Slag Harrison, who was supposed to be here, but uh, unfortunately he, he sent me an email and saying that uh, he cannot make it to the conference because of his uh, health problems. Uh, he called it, uh, whatever is going on in Balochistan, he called it a slow motion gen genocide. but. But let me tell you this uh, today, that uh, this is not a slow motion genocide. It's a full-fledged genocide that is going on across the border, both in Iranian and Pakistani Balochistan. 
Uh, we all see that the United Nations, Obama administration, and the European Union are all rushing to help and save the lives of the Libyan citizens from being slaughtered by dictator Gaddafi and his uh, forces. But the same thing is happening in Pakistani and Iranian occupied Balochistan for the last 63 years, and no one has done anything about it. Uh, is Baloch blood cheaper than the Libyan citizen? May I ask this to our president, Mr. Obama, the United Security Council, and our Secretary of State, Madam Hillary Clinton? May I ask why Baloch are not being considered why Baloch are being considered less humane and are treated differently than the Libyan citizen? Baloch are going through the same helicopter gunship attacks, arrests, kidnapping, torture, and extrajudicial killings by Pakistani army and Iranian armies, and they are being hanged by Iranian revolutionary guards in public every day. But the UN and the world community have closed their eyes over these crimes against Baloch people. All we Baloch are asking from the US government, the, the, U, uh, the, the UN and the international community to fulfill their obligations towards Balochistan. International intervention is long overdue in Balochistan and it must be carried out without any further delay. Silence is not an option. Silence over Pakistani crimes and human rights violations against the defenseless Baloch citizen is equal to complicity. It is time that the international community ask Pakistan and Iran to stop killing of secular Baloch people in their own homeland, Balochistan. Dear friends, let me bring this to your attention that Balochistan was never a part of Pakistan. Baloch did not fight to create uh, this country called Pakistan. It is unjust to ask and force the secular Baloch people to live in with extremists and terrorists. What would you say if I ask you, any one of you, that would you like to live in mis with Mr. Bin Laden under the same roof? I'm sure that your answer would be with a big no. Nobody wants to live with Mr. Bin Laden under the same roof. Why? So why the Baloch should be forced to live in within Pakistani extremist and Iranian mullah. We have nothing in common with these two Islamist extremist states. Baloch are not terrorists, they are not extremists. They are not Taliban, they are not Al-Qaeda. But they are the victims of Pakistani and Iranian state terrorists and extremists. Baloch, like the court of Iraq, are pro-American, and they share many American values, including the freedom, liberty, and justice for all. I ask Obama administration, our president, Mr. Obama, and his administration, and the world community to please listen to the cry of Baloch people. Please help us because before it's too late. Please help us before it's too late. Our identity and existence as a secular nation is at stake. Today, the Baloch peoples are struggling for their survival, to protect and preserve their identity as a secular nation. They are looking towards the West and pro-independence democratic nations to come forward to their rescue. A free, secular, independent, united Balochistan is the dream of every Baloch. We believe it is in the interest of United States and the world community to support the Baloch. A free, united, secular, democratic, independent Balochistan is the only answers of all the problems that the U.S. and world community is facing in this region, including the growing threat of Islamic extremism and terrorism. A free United Balochistan not only helps to close Taliban and Al-Qaeda sanctuaries and safe haven in Balochistan, but it will also help in the stability and security of Afghanistan. And it will also keep China half of Gwadar and Persian Gulf and put a check on Iran. The U.S. has tried everything, spending billions 
dollars with no outcome. The insurgency, Taliban insurgency is growing and it seems like an unending. It is time for the U.S. to give Baloch a chance. We can show how we can produce the expected result in less time with less money spent. It's time for Obama administration to initiate dialogue with Baloch people and explore on how we can help to secure a stable Middle East and a South Asia. We got bases, we got warm water, we got energy routes, we got oil and gas reserves. An independent Balochistan has a lot to offer in return. A secular, independent, and democratic Balochistan is in the interest of the larger cause of liberty, human rights, and democracy. Pakistan and Iran are, are up to eliminate Baloch people, or radicalize them and turn their secular culture into an Islamic jihadist culture. But Baloch's are resisting this against all these odds without any foreign help and support. They are fighting bravely, rendering sacrifices to defend their homeland, to defend their honor and dignity, and to restore the sovereignty over their land, coast, and resources. They are fighting this war not for themselves alone, but for the rest of the world to make sure to make sure that the resourceful rich strategic Balochistan does not fall into the hands of the Pakistani and Iranian extremist and communist China. There is a saying they said that a threat to liberty anywhere is a threat to liberty everywhere. Baloch are fighting for their liberty, and they, de they deserve to be helped. They deserve to be helped in the interest of humanity. They have decided to fight this war to the end. They have nothing to lose, but only their chance. With that, I close my remarks, and I will try to let Khan of Khalad to speak to you for a few minutes through the Skype. And let me see if that well works. Hello, Khan Saab, are you there? Hello. Yeah, you are on the air. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, uh, Khan Khalad is in London and uh, he is going to speak to you all. Uh, go ahead, Khan Saab, you are on the air. Bismillah rahman rahim Ladies and gentlemen, friends and my fellow Baloch. Today I am going to share with you the pains of the mothers whose children are missing. I am also want to share the pains and sufferings Can you of hear it over the, over the head? missing young men who are no? suffering in the illegal Pakistani detention centers. The pains of mothers, fathers, sisters, daughters, wives, and children who don't ones are dead or alive. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Balochistan deserve better from Pakistan. Balochistan provides most of Pakistan's cheap energy resources. Without Balochistan, Pakistan would not survive. In return, there is no single week that goes by without recovery of Baloch dead bodies. Their tortured, sustained bodies are dumped all over and everywhere in the mountains and on roadsides. The Pakistanis are even dishonoring the Baloch dead bodies they have no respect for the Baloch custom and have no human dignity and of course no Islamic values too. On the other hand, they call themselves the Fort of Islam. Respected scholar J. 
journalist and author Slick Harrison described the situation of Balochistan as slow motion genocide. But for me, it is full genocide. The only difference is the international community has chosen to be silent for reasons beyond our understanding. It is beyond my understanding to why death, torture and forced disappearances of Baloch are tolerated. The American and the European weapons are being used against unarmed Baloch. The townships and villages are being bombed out completely and ground is being prepared for oil and gas and mineral resource exploitation. The Baloch as human beings deserve better. International community and intergovernmental organizations should not ignore the Baloch cries for help. It is beyond my imagination that Pakistan recruits, shelters, trains and instigates terrorism against American interests and yet again, Pakistan is rewarded with billions of dollars out of American and European taxpayers' pockets. It is said that evil thrives upon the silence of good men. I believe most Western countries are aware of the crimes committed against not only Baloch but humanity. Exploitation of resources by Pakistan with the help of international companies and multinational companies are increasing. This exploitation must stop immediately and multinational companies' behaviors must be condemned. Baluchistan is occupied territory and must be treated as such by the international community. In pursuit of mineral and energy resources, the multinational company should not ignore the rights of the Baloch and their ancestral homeland. The Baloch are a peace-loving nation, but when their existence and identity is under threat, they have all the right to defend their interests and learn from all exploiters. In 1948, Balochistan was forcibly occupied by Pakistan against the will of its people. Pakistan is an occupying force. I therefore call upon USA, European Union and UN to recognize Pakistan as an occupying force because I believe the will of the people is sovereign. In 47, the people of Baluchistan had built for an independent Baluchistan and are still demanding for an independent Baluchistan. I believe that the will of the people of Baluchistan will win. There is a vision for Baluchistan that it will be a democracy and one man, one mode. Nobody will be superior or inferior. All will be equal, the one who is in the mountain and the one who is agitating, whether he is doing or asking for the rights and wherever they are doing this. All of them who are living on this land from Aran Dajal in southern Punjab, from the deserts and plains in southern Afghanistan to the sea, from Kirman to Bandarabas, and from northern Sin. All these are Baloch. Our thinking and heart should be as big as this big land of Baluchistan. There should be no toleration for I or me, but only we all Baloch. There is a saying, 
in Baruchi, which I want to say in Baruchi, and then I want to translate it for the people in the conference. Ushtir Bubu Dur Bichar Ar Mabu Pade Dema Macha. It means be a camel and see far and don't be a donkey and see your own hooves. In the interest of Balochistan, we are all united and we will prevail. I want to specially name the people who have done a lot for Balochistan and I want to name them too. It's Wendy Johnson, Annie, William Marks, Peter Thatcher, and another journalist from Spain, Slick Harrison, of course, and Mr. Hughes and Andrew Eva, who are sitting here, and of course, a doctor of the Lohaid, without whom we won't have been able to talk to you all and give my views to all of you. And of course, I don't want to miss the name of Munir Mengel, who is also doing the best he can. And everybody sitting here, kindly give these people a big hand. Thank you, Khan Sahib. Thank you very much for your inspiring uh, great speech.